Hi, welcome to Intermolecular Forces, Solids and Liquids. My name is Dr. English. Today we're going to be talking about cooling curves. Specifically, we're going to look at, you know, cooling curves, condensation, solidification slash freezing, and then a practice problem at the end. Cooling curves as exothermic reactions. The cooling curve is essentially the reverse of a heating curve. From T1 to T2, which we see right here, T1 to T2, condensation occurs as the gas changes to a liquid. So we're going through a phase change here. We're starting with a gas and we're going to a liquid right here. So the phase change here is called condensation, where energy will be released from the system out into the surroundings. During condensation, kinetic energy remains constant as potential energy decreases. Particles begin to slow down, molecules move closer together as intermolecular forces are formed, and the gas and liquid phases both exist during this interval. So, just to point this out again, here's condensation. You will notice that there's no change in temperature during this interval, which means the kinetic energy remains constant but my potential energy will be decreasing from T1 to T2. Another thing to remember during this phase change is that both the phases of gas and liquid will be present as you go from T1 until T2. Condensation of water vapor to liquid water will release 2,260 joules of heat per one gram of water. This is the same amount, in case you were thinking, wow, that number sounds really familiar. It's the same amount as the heat of vaporization for water that you would find on table B of your reference tables. From T3 to T4, solidification, also known as freezing, occurs as a liquid changes to a solid. So in this case, we're going from a liquid where everything from T2 to T3 is a liquid, our kinetic energy is just decreasing, potential energy remains constant, the temperature of our liquid is going down. Then we go through this phase change of solidification from T3 to T4 until finally, right at this point right here, everything is now a solid and our solid will decrease in temperature. Remember, during solidification, kinetic energy remains constant, like I just said, because we see that it is flat right here from interval T3 to T4, and potential energy will decrease. Particles continue to slow down, molecules move closer together as more intermolecular forces are formed, and the liquid and solid phases both exist during this interval. So right here at this point, everything's still a liquid, and once you get exactly to T4, everything will be a solid. But between the time frame of T3 to T4, you will have both liquid and solid phases present during this time frame. Solidification or freezing of liquid water to ice will release 334 joules of heat per one gram of water. Again, this is the same amount as the heat of fusion of war water, which you would find on table B of your reference table. But instead of absorbing that energy to go from a solid to a liquid, now we're going to release that energy as we go from a liquid to a solid. Like the heating curve, phase transitions are characterized by constant temperature, which I pointed out before, which means no change in kinetic energy. Potential energy will decrease during these phase changes. And remember, one more time, condensation and solidification slash freezing are exothermic processes. They are going to release energy from the system out into the surrounding. Let's look at a heat of fusion problem framed in the idea that we're actually going to freeze something instead of melting something. So remember, no melting here when you read the problem. We're looking for freezing or solidification instead. Be sure to read carefully. The heat of fusion value will be exactly the same. Instead of heat being absorbed by the system from the surroundings, energy will be released from the system into the surroundings. So let's look at an example of this type of problem. 
how much heat energy is released when 200 grams of liquid water freezes. So we're going through the phase change of liquid to solid. We're still going to use Q equals MHF, which is off reference table T. The mass here is 200 grams of water. Our HF value, which is listed on your reference tables, will be 334 joules per gram. And we know that we've set this up correctly because grams will cancel grams and we're left with joules, which is the value that we want. So when we multiply 200 times 334, we get 66,800 joules. And could we put that into scientific notation? Of course we could, or we can just leave it in standard notation. But it is to the correct number of significant figures because when I look back to my given, I have 200 with the decimal, so that's three significant figures, and my final answer is also to three significant figures. Now let's look at a heat of vaporization problem in terms of water not vaporizing, but condensing. So remember, we're not boiling here, we're condensing instead, so be sure to read carefully. The heat of vaporization value will be exactly the same as what you have seen on table B. Instead of heat being absorbed by the system from the surroundings, energy will be released from the system into the surroundings. So let's look at an example. How much heat energy is released when 100 grams of water vapor condenses to a liquid? The formula that we're going to use is right off of table T, where Q equals mHV. The mass of water that we're dealing with here is our water vapor, which is 100 grams of water vapor, times the heat of vaporization, which is 2,260 joules per gram. We know that we're on the right track. If grams will cancel grams, we're left with joules, which is what we want. And when we multiply these two values together, we get 226,000 joules of energy, which, like I've said before, you can put into scientific notation or you can leave it in standard notation. So what did you learn? We talked in detail about cooling curves. We mentioned condensation. We looked at solidification and freezing. And then finally, we did some practice problems at the end. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.